Welcome to this trailer of our course this fall and winter called When Algebra Meets Analysis and Number Theory. So I have written here a different title, Fuchsian Differential Equations, but in fact this will combine algebra analysis and number theory. So we will use methods from all these three fields to find our results and our methods. The object of our investigation will be Fuchsian differential equations. I'm not going to define them properly now. I will give you instead a simple example. You take linear ordinary differential equations. So you are in one variable and you could imagine you take the following, take x square y double prime minus x y prime <coughs> plus y equals zero. Or you may modify slightly 2x y prime plus 2y equals zero. So you just change a little bit the coefficients and you want to solve. And in order to solve these equations, you can proceed almost entirely algebraically. You don't need to know uh, analysis here, as I will show you in a moment. And the interesting part in the theory is that the coefficients they depend on our variables. So we have, let me call this equation one, equation two. We have linear differential equations. Here we have polynomial coefficients. Now if we want to solve, uh, let's do the number two first. We just take y of x here we have a very simple example. You take x to the k, k in n, and you plug it in into 2. And then you will get, as I let you do yourself, a polynomial equation for k. And this equation is, in this case, very simple. It is k squared minus 3k plus 2 equals 0. And from this, you will get k equals 1 or 2. And so our solution will be y of x. You have two solutions, either x or y of x. Let me call it y1. y2 of x equals x squared. Okay, so that's just almost by guessing. This is an ansatz. You don't even need a whole power series. You just have a monomial solution. Now, let me switch to equation number one. Here I am working on a light board, which is technically a little bit challenging, and the whole class will be given like this. I always have to erase and then dry in order to make this work. Okay, so let us now consider equation one. And it's easy to see that you get a first solution, y of x equals x. But here's the equation for k will give you k minus 1 square equals 0. So k is 1, but you just have found one solution. So where is the second solution? And <clears throat> the theory of Fuchs Frobenius tells you that you have to introduce logarithms to solve. So introducing logarithms, we are here still in characteristic 0, let's say, over the complex numbers. If you take the log of x, then the defining property of the log of x 
is 1 of x, x to the minus 1. So <clears throat> 1 over x has primitive logarithm of x, whereas other monomials have a monomial as their primitive. So here you will see that y2 of x is x times log of x. Okay. So this is a <clears throat> very simple situation from the first few. But there are a lot of fantastic phenomena happening when you study solutions, when you try to describe which kind of equations are, have nice solutions, which ones have degenerate uh, solutions with, expo with essential singularities. So <clears throat> you can do several things. You can do it algebraically. You can also use analytic continuation of the solutions to get the so-called monodromy group. You can also look at the quality of the solutions. Let's say, when do our solutions have integral coefficients? Then you will end up in number theory. You can also start with an equation which is given in characteristic 0, where the polynomials have rational or even integer coefficients. And if you have integer coefficients, you may reduce modulo prime numbers, and you may ask, what are the solutions of the reduced equation? And can you get information from reduction modulo p on the original equations and on the original solutions of this equation? In the background, there is this famous grotendieck cuts p curvature conjecture, which is still unsolved and which precisely handles this type of equations. It asks for a criterion to describe when the solutions here have no logarithms, and when you look at the power series solutions, when these power series solutions are actually algebraic functions in the sense of satisfying a polynomial equation over the polynomials. Okay. So this will be the topic of this class. There's a website, which I will indicate you here, where I ask you, CC, where I ask you to re register uh, because uh, we will send out email information, we will send out sometimes exercises, we will send out maybe course material, literature, and then we can read you. You can always drop off unsubscribe, so no problem. The class will be always given by Zoom on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central European time. It will be recorded, so in case you cannot watch live, you can also look at it afterwards. You can look at it in higher speed. So <clears throat> this should, be, should work well. It will be 90 minutes uh, each time, and the class will start on October 11th, Tuesday, and will last until end of January. Okay. You may also get a certificate of attendance. And if your university accepts, you may even hand in an exam. Uh, I am in contact with several universities so that they accept, accept the exams for this course. Getting a certificate is no problem. Okay. So if you have any questions or further remarks, just contact me by email. You will find everything on the website. And I'm looking forward to meet you maybe or the next week on October 11th. Thank you very much and see you then. Bye-bye.